suppose I have some data which is not linearly separable, right? So that is the problem that we had with perceptrons, right? So what happens if the data is not linearly separable? Perceptrons do not converge. So can we tweak our objective function that we have here to make sure that we can handle non-linearly separable data? Is that the right way of saying it? Huh? It is okay to say non-linearly separable data was my question. Yeah, linearly inseparable data, right? So you have to be careful where you put the not, the negation there, right? So what we do in this case? Yeah, somebody had a suggestion? We can minimize some of the, uh, we can associate an error function and minimize that. Yeah, so how will you do this, right? So the, there are many ways, there are many choices you can make, right? Let me not uh, play, play around with it. There are many choices you could make. Uh, but there is one particular choice which is uh, seems to yield a very nice optimization formulation. Okay. So what is the choice? I am going to say that I would really like to maximize the margin right? and I would like to get as many data points correct as possible. Right? So if you think about it, so there are a couple of things, if this is the margin that I want. right? So what are the problems here? Well, these data points are within the margin, right? So I have some data points that are within the margin. So I like to minimize such cases. There are some data points that are within the margin and erroneous, right? I would like to minimize such cases as well, right? If you think about it, if I try to get this correct, right? There is a gap here. And there seems to be a gap here between the points. If I try to get this correct and move my classification surface below, then the margin would have been reduced even further, right? So it's okay to get this wrong. But then, what about this guy? Is he within the margin or outside the margin? Huh? Outside. Within. Right. So the margin for that class is defined on the other side. Right, so the margin for that class is this side. So anything to this side and x is within the margin. Does it make sense? Right, this will be y i times this. Right, so this will, this will actually be negative. So it is within the margin. Right? We want things to be greater than one. Y i times f of x. We want it to be greater than one. Right, greater than or equal to one. This is going to be negative. So obviously this is within the margin, right? Make sense? Right, so essentially what I want to do is minimize these distances. So you can see the distances I have marked here. So these distances I would like to minimize, does that make sense, right? So this is a certain small distance inside the margin, right? This is a large distance inside the margin, this is a very large distance inside the margin. And likewise, I can mark each one of these and I want to minimize these. So let us In our terms, there is uh, xi1 to xi5, and I want to minimize those, right? Essentially, so if I minimize the sum of these deviations I make along with my original, along with my original objective function, right? I can handle. Why don't I minimize the minimum here again? Uh, that would. <laughs> minimize the maximum uh, would essentially mean that I will try to get as many things correct as possible. So in this case, I do not mind getting something wrong as long as the overall deviation is not, does not exceed a certain limit. See that the difference between minimizing the maximum and minimizing a sum is that I might as well give all of the sum 
to a single data point it might be something that is very hard to classify right i might have one single outlier somewhere here right let's 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 draw so this data might be perfectly separable and i might have an outlier there okay so now if i say say okay minimize the sum of the things it's fine right but if i say minimize the max okay then it's going to actually give me a, some a hyperplane somewhere there okay but like i said many different formulations are possible this one actually yields a very nice uh, computation that's one of the reasons people use this okay <coughs> so what i'm going to do is let me write it here So I'm going to say that this has to be that we had already, right? I'm going to introduce a slack variable. Okay, so it doesn't have to be greater than m; it can be some fraction lesser also, right? M is what I would really like, okay, but I allow it to have a slack. Ideally, I would want most of these zeta is to be, uh, xi is to be zero. Right? I want ideally, I would like most of the xi is to be zero. If I force all xi is to be zero, I am back here, right? But I really like some leeway, right? So I am allowing myself that leeway by introducing this xi is here. Okay, this is a very standard uh, uh, technique for relaxing constraints in optimization. Right? That's that's a, one of the reasons people adopt this. Right? It's a standard constraint. So another thing which I could have chosen is that, right? In fact, this is a little bit more common constraint, but it turns out that in this particular case, if I choose m minus z i instead of m into one minus z i, I end up getting a non-convex optimization problem. Okay. So we don't want that, right? So so we actually end up doing this. So I, I drew this figure first because I wanted to get an idea of what these slack variables actually mean, right? So these slack variables essentially tell you by what fraction, right? You are violating the margin, right? So xi one is essentially what fraction of distance you are coming in here from the margin. Like xi two is what fraction of the distance you are coming in from the margin. So if the margin is m, so I have moved. Some fraction of the distance inside, right? So essentially, that's what the xi tells me, right? So what are the constraints we have? That's a question, right? So the first constraint I have is okay. All xi i's have to be greater than or equal to zero, right? I don't care about points going to that side of the margin, right? So all xi i's are greater than or equal to zero. And the second thing is whatever we have been talking about, right? I don't want the xi i's to be very large, taken in total. So I want to upper bound them by a constant. So why why do all the xi i's have to be positive? So, because I'm talking about going that side of the margin, right? So, I, if I if my xi is or negative, so essentially I'll be imposing a tighter constraint than what I was looking for. So, this will be like it'll be larger than m, right? This is I mean I'll be having a thing that's larger than m on the right hand side. Xi just represents the distance of the a point to the line, right? I'm sorry. The zi just represents the distance of. So it's a, it's a, that's why it's a relative distance, right? So essentially, this becomes what m minus m zi, right? So so I originally it should be m. So it is now m zi away from there. Okay, so zi is essentially a relative distance, 
right and if I make xi is uh, negative so this will become plus so that will essentially mean that not only do I want the data points to be away than m I actually am asking it to be farther away than this so it just imposes a tighter constraint so I do not want that to happen. So and here we, we are essentially giving it a budget, right? We don't want it to be greater than the budget, right? Fine. So we saw such a uh, constraint earlier. Where did we see such a constraint earlier? Where we had a budget. We didn't want it to be greater than a budget. Huh? So yeah, and ridge regression and lasso and other things. We had this thing, right? So wherever we are looking at this regularized regression. So we had this greater than a constant or lesser than a, a constant and what did we do in those cases? We pushed it into the objective function right and then added a multiplier there and then we said okay it has to be right so we then there is a relationship between this constant and the multiplier that we put in the objective function right. So likewise we will do the same thing here. I will do all the other transformations that we need to do right to, to normalize beta and things like that. So I will essentially end up with the same objective function I had there. equal to because you have gotten rid of the m right why how did we get rid of the m m is 1 by beta right so 1 by norm beta so we got rid of that so anything else we need here So now that we have this objective function, what should be the value of c if I want a linearly separable case? If I want to solve the linearly separable problem, right, or I want to ensure that all z, z i, z i is or zero, what should the value of c be? This is just a thought, simple question. Huh? Infinity. infinity, right? C should be infinity. So the larger the value of C, the more you are penalizing the violations, right? So the smaller the xi i should be, right? So the larger the value of C, the smaller the xi i should be, right? So this is a trade-off. So the larger you make C, the smaller will the margin be, but more you will be getting more of the training data correct, right? So so if you, for large values of C you are allowing a little bit more leeway in does it make sense so if c is very large or c is small then you are allowing lot more errors to happen if c is very large then you are forcing the classifier to classify as much of the training data as correct as possible okay if the data is truly linearly separable and you make c very large what will happen you will find the the correct linear separator right but if the data is truly linearly separable but you keep c small what might happen you might trade off errors in the training data for a larger margin even if the data is linearly separable is that a desirable thing sometimes huh? when noisy data Exactly. So, if the data is noisy such that there are some data points that are closer to the margin, right? maybe one or two data points that are closer to the margin. So, if you are trying to find the perfect linear separation, you will pay attention to them as well. 
right? And therefore, you will end up having a low margin, right? But then, uh, if you are willing to ignore a few noisy data points, right? Even if the training data looks perfectly separable, right? You might end up making a few errors on it, but you will get a more robust classifier, right? So, can people visualize the situation? I am going to try and do something here. Let us see if that works. Data looks perfectly separable, right? That is noise. Right? Is it still separable? Yes, right? <laughs> that is more or less linear. See, the data points are point. Okay, ah, there you go. Okay, there, it is still separable. Right. If you, if you try to solve it as a perfectly separable problem, that is the separator that you are going to get. But if you allow errors, right? So that will probably be the <coughs> separating hyperplane you get, and that is probably a more appropriate hyperplane, right? Apart from being robust, it's it's also correct in an expected sense. So so far, no questions. Now we'll move on to the whole uh, uh, the primal two. So, I just wanted to leave this on board till I wrote this down so that you can compare it, right? So, it is all, all good. Okay, fine. Right? Is it fine? So that's the primal. Oh, sorry. I mean, you have alpha, right? The xi alpha mu has to be greater than equal to zero. Yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to do that. Huh? What is that? Why is it? What is the single condition? It is not a single condition, it is there for each i. Uh, oh, we need the sigma of i less than or equal to constant, do we? No, we do not, right? So, that is why we consider constructed put that into the optimization uh, objective function itself right so by minimizing this right we are ensuring that sigma psi i will be less than some limit right and like i was mentioning in the ridge regression discussion so you can find a relationship between this constant and this c right it's also a function of the range of your objective function 
but you can always find so essentially they are equivalent ways of writing the uh, optimization problem except that you have to I mean this constant and this c will not be the same they have they will be different values okay so this this constraint is gone this is no longer present here right that went into the objective function okay so putting all of this back in and doing some algebra I'm going to be surprised at the algebra outcome of this. Anyone has already solved it? Know what what it is? Similar, right? right. So it's essentially the same dual you will get, but your constraints are <coughs> different. Yeah, I mean, this is already there, so it's just added for completeness sake. But what is important here is <coughs> earlier while I had only a non negativity constraint on alphas. Now I have a upper bound on the value of alpha. So why is that? Because alpha is only c minus mu. Right? Since alpha is c minus mu, so there has to be a upper bound on alpha. <coughs> okay. That's good. So what about the other KKT conditions? So, 1 to 7 are the KKT conditions. <coughs> okay. Right. So, what do you notice here again? Well, you notice again that your beta is determined by your alpha i, y i, x i, just like you had earlier, right? Your beta is given by those x i's for which alphas will be non-zero, right? So, like we had earlier, those x i's for which alpha is non-zero are called support points, okay, or support vectors, depending on how we want to look at it. Okay. Now, let's go look at when it will be non-zero. Right, so, when will alpha be 0? The whole thing is non zero. When will this whole thing be non zero? Right, when it lies at a large enough distance on the right side of the margin, right? What about xi? Uh, xi will be 0. Right, Everybody somewhere here, xi i's will be 0, right. So, in xi i's are 0, so you will be left with this, this term alone, right, minus 1. That is just the ex exactly the same condition that we had earlier, right. So, if this is far, far, far enough away from the 
margin then this will be non zero so alphas have to be zero so we know for sure now okay the same thing right things that are on the right side of the margin right right means correct side okay things that are on the correct side of the margin then alphas will be zero so they won't contribute anything right so now what about things that are on the margin Is there a third case? We have to consider third case now, right? And we have to consider the third case. In which case, what will happen? When xi will start increasing, right? When xi i will become non zero. If xi i is non zero, what does it imply? Okay, because my alpha is c minus mu i. Right, so if my xi is non-zero, then my mu i's will become zero. Therefore, my alpha i's will become c. Right. So now, how will this term go to zero? By suitably making xi i large enough. Right. So I'll make xi i large enough so that this term will go to zero. Right. Because this is this will be negative. Right. Or this will be less than one. Right, so I'll make this. I'll adjust xi i so that this term in the square bracket goes to zero because my alpha i will be c. What's that? In the second case. Yeah. That uh, eta i is it zero? Uh, this is because I don't really don't want to penalize this case, right? This case also xi i will be zero. Right. So this case xi i is zero. This case also xi i will be zero, right? Because what I really need is, what is my condition? Greater than or equal to one minus xi i. So if it's equal to one, so I can set xi i to zero. Correct. So in both these cases, xi i is zero. So does that make sense? Is everyone with me here. So what are all the support vectors? Everything on the margin, and everything on the wrong side of the margin as well, right? So everything for which alpha is non-zero will now become support vectors. So at the end of the day, I'm going to say that you are just going to use a package to solve all of these things, right? <laughs> but it's like saying, yeah, yeah. Anyway, you are going to use Microsoft Windows or I mean Mac OS X or something. Why do you learn operating systems, right? So you need to know what the internals are, right? It's not the fact that you just use the tools that matters, right? When I mean, you're going to just use the tools, well, yeah, we can do a tool course, right? How to use the tools, <laughs> right? How will you start up LibSVM? Uh, it's not trivial, right? So many people I know actually run experiments with SVMs by just using the default parameter settings that the package will give, 
right? And don't laugh. I mean, there might be some of you in that. <laughs> okay. But then, then it's you need to understand what is it that you are tuning, right? So now I told you about the C parameter, right? So you understand, you have some idea of what a large C means versus what a small C means, right? Instead of blindly saying that, okay, I am going to tune C from some some number to some other number, right? So to having an appreciation of what these things are doing actually helps you even use the tools better, right? So that's the whole idea behind doing all of this. It's not that I am going to expect you to come and derive a large margin classifier tomorrow. I mean, ideally, 